How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode and today we're going to learn how to use regex. If you guys normally watch my content, then this will be a bit different. And if you're here to learn how to use regex in the game Barrow Trauma, then keep watching. If you're interested in game development using Unreal Engine, you can check out some of my videos on the channel. Barrow Trauma is a game about you piloting a submarine to fight aliens on another world. It's pretty cool. If you guys don't know the game, go check it out. Here's a basic outline of what we're going to cover in this video. So if you want to know what regex is, or skip straight to the examples, or do something else, then use one of the timestamps on this screen. Here's the list of things I plan to cover over the next few videos. Character classes, quantifiers, anchors and alternation, and finally, capture groups and conditionals using capture groups. So all of this alien language does look a bit daunting and a little bit scary, so I'm hoping I'll be able to break this down for you guys into really easy, bite-sized things that you can understand. Today we're going to just talk about character classes and how they're used in regex. But before we get into that, we need to talk about what is regex. Regex stands for regular expression. In the context of Barrow Trauma, there are three elements you need to know. The input, regex, and the output. The input is simply a string or a line of text that you want to feed into the system. Regex is the search terms that you want to find in your text. Output is the result that you get whether you find it or not. And if you click on this regex component, here you would put your regex expression, your search terms, and if it can find it, it will give you an output of one. If it cannot find it, then it will give you a false output of zero. You can actually change this to whatever you like. You can change the output as well, but I am controlling this output from a memory component, which is just a text input that I can use to control what's going to go there. So I am putting a one here. If I change this to a yes, then when you go back to regex, you can see that's going to be my output. So for example, I'm just going to set this up to say no hits. And if I were to type in input, it'll give me no hits because it's not an exact match to the capital I and PUT that I am actually feeding into the regex. If I made my first letter capital I, then it will give me a yes. If I'm simply trying to find one of the letters from my input, say the letter P, it should give me a yes, and it does. If I try to find the letter Z, it will give me no hits because Z cannot be found in my word input. I can also change the input to something like zebra. And now we can see the output has changed to say, yes, we have found something because Z is something that we can find in Zebra. If I put the letter P again though, it's gonna say no hits. So regex is like a search engine almost in that it will try to find stuff that you're looking for inside some other input that's going into it, like Zebra. But the challenging part with regex is how you describe what you're looking for. Sometimes it can be really straightforward, but sometimes it could be something really complicated like square bracket a to z close bracket and then put something in there like t and then hopefully it gives you something and it, if it doesn't then it's because something's wrong somewhere so it's all about understanding the syntax and this comes back to the alien language the first of these would be the period or the dot symbol it is essentially a wild card this would tell regex that you want to find pretty much anything that you can type on your keyboard. So if I were to change this to a dot and hit enter, it'll give me a yes because zebra are all characters that are part of the dot. In fact, if I were to change the zebra to say blah, 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 it'll probably still accept it. So you would use dot if you don't care about the characters as long as there is something in there. I think the only time this will fail is if you don't have anything in your input. So if it's empty or if it's a null character, that's when regex will fail. If you're trying to find a number or a single digit inside whatever you're searching through, then backslash D is the way to go. This will help you find digits. Let's change the regex and put backslash D and then change the input to say one, two, three. This gives me a yes. If I just put one digit, it gives me a yes. If I put a letter in front of it, it still gives me a yes. And I can put a letter behind it, it still gives me a yes. And the reason is because it's simply trying to find a digit anywhere inside this text. But this search will fail if I put another backslash D. That's because this regex is now saying we want to find two digits together. So if you wanted to pass, you have to put a second digit right next to the first one. If I put the digit at the back, it won't work because they need to be consecutively together. This next one is very similar, but it's a little more flexible. Backslash W allows you to find letters from A to Z and numbers and anything that would classify as alpha numeric. So this would include some symbols as well, but not everything. For example, a white space character will not be a part of this. If I change this to backslash W, 
this will work because there is at least one letter in there somewhere. If I were to change this to backslash w twice, this will still work because numbers are also part of the definition. However, if I were to put a space between all of these letters and numbers here, so a space one space a space two and hit enter, it will fail because we are not getting two consecutive alpha numeric characters together. There is a space between all of them. If I remove any one of these spaces, like A and 2, so A2 is counted as two alphanumerics consecutively, and that's why it passes. So the space bars can be a bit annoying, but this is where backslash S comes in. This allows you to search for space characters. So back to the regex, if I were to put just a backslash S in the middle of these two and hit enter, this will still work. If I were to separate all of these, the space character, it should still work. That's because as long as you have something in here that exists with a space character between them, it will accept it. However, if I were to put two spaces between all of these characters, then it won't work again because my regex is not looking for something with two space characters. I would need to specify that in here very specifically. The search terms you put into regex are very, very literal. And there are some ways around this, but you're gonna have to wait for a future video on that. And now a word from our sponsors. That's right, I don't have sponsors. But guys, if you're finding this video helpful so far, then hit the like button and share this with your friends so that more people who need the help can find this video on Google and YouTube. Why does this sound like a charity? Donate today. Back to the video. This next character class takes a completely different turn. The square brackets are telling regex that we want to find at least one of the things inside the brackets. A, Z would mean we're trying to find something with A or Z in our text. So let's change this to square bracket A, Z, square bracket close, and going to go back to our memory and change this completely to something else. One, two, three, A, B, C. And this comes out to be true because there is an A in there. If I were to change the A to a Z, it still works because the Z is what we're also looking for. If I were to remove the Z entirely, so there's no A, there's no Z, this will fail because in regex, the only things we're trying to find are A and Z. But we don't need both, we just need one of them. That's what the square brackets are for. And you can put other things beside letters, you can put numbers. So if I wanted to find a 2, I just need to put the digit 2, or I can find the number 3, or perhaps 1, 2, and 3. In fact, I can put them in a different order and it'll still work, because it's only going to find one of those characters. If however you wanted to find a range of characters, then you need a hyphen, or a dash, between the characters that you're searching for. And you want this to make sense. You don't want it to go backwards or anything. So keep it to something simple like A to Z or one to five, zero to nine, that sort of syntax. In our example, I would accept anything that would have the numbers one, two, and three. So if I'm searching for that, I could say open bracket one dash three, close bracket, and this will work just fine. I can increase the range to six and it will still work just fine because I have at least one, two, and three in there. If I change my search terms to say, I want to find everything between four to six, this will fail because we don't have anything between four to six in the text. You can do the same with letters. You can say A to Z, and this will work because B and C is inside A to Z. However, if I said S to Z, this won't work because B and C is not part of that range. If you wanted to find something based on what's not in there, then you would use the pointy caret symbol. This means you don't want to find the stuff that you've written inside your brackets. So it has the opposite effect. In the case of our 1, 2, 3, B, C, finding this means I need to search for terms that are not in here if I'm going to use that syntax. So open square bracket, pointy caret, and I can put something like a D or even a 4 close bracket and this should work just fine because there is no D and 4 inside our text. The expression will give us a successful hit as long as we find everything except these two characters. If I change this to say 1 and C, this will still work simply because 2, 3 and B would qualify for not being 1 or C. So even though we do have a 1 and C in there, there are still other things in there that will qualify. Because regex is not about trying to find the entire text or match it, it's trying to find something in it. It could find the whole thing if you want, but it can be a substring. If I wanted to make this completely fail, then I'd have to go 1, 2, 3, B, C, and that's when it has no hits. 
Alternatively, I could use this final syntax, which is simply excluding a range of characters. So for our example, what I would do is change this and say square bracket pointy carrot 1 to 3, A to C, close bracket, and this will have no hits. If I change the C to a B, then it will have a hit because C is not part of this exclusion, and C is inside our text. And you'll notice I've done something a bit funky in here. So 3 and the A are a bit like how you would write it as if you were to write bracket 3 and A, which means either one is acceptable. In the case of what I've written here, because they are both ranges, it's saying that either range 1 to 3 is acceptable or excluded, and range A to B is also excluded. Now, obviously, the syntax I covered today can go a lot deeper. You can use it in a lot of different ways for a lot of different situations. It's really up to your imagination, but I hope this gave you guys some sense of what you can do with it. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the websites that you can use to test some of this stuff on. Here's one of the websites that I use to test regex. This is regex101.com, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. If you don't want it, you can just close most of these boxes, and it's probably good, a good idea to just have all the references up here so you can see what are the things you want to work with, and even just click on them to learn what they can do, and even put them into an actual example to try out in the editor. What's really great about this website is that it has C Sharp. There are other formats that you can use here as well, but C Sharp is the one you want to use for Barotrauma because the game is written in C Sharp. The other ones will not be as accurate. However, if you're not using conditionals in capture groups, then you can pretty much just use the default because that's just as compatible for the basic stuff. Or you can use this website, regexr.com, which is an excellent website for beginners if you want to just try things out without worrying about all the other stuff that's going on around the screen. Because this is simply going to have references where you can learn things on the side about different character classes or groups or anchors and etc. The only two issues with this is it doesn't have C sharp, so it's not fully compatible, but it doesn't really matter if you're just sticking to the basics. And it doesn't have a debugger that allows you to see what's going on inside the regex as it goes along. If you're really into the nerdy stuff and want to learn more about regex, then regular-expressions.info is a great website. It explains everything in depth and compares it to different programming languages. So beginners, regexr.com. Debugging regex101.com. Nerds, regular-expressions.info. So, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it made sense. And if you liked it, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush Code, out!